tell me more about uh, you know polycystic ovary i yeah. every second patient maybe i would say every patient yeah. of mine has polycystic ovary so is is there a way that we can avoid polycystic ovary that's the most important thing See, Dr. Abhishek, what is important is polycystic ovary. In uh, in reality, is one in three patients who walk with this in our gynecology clinic. In your case, if any girl coming to you with a vestibule, will definitely have it because it's a syndrome, like we said, it is a part of the thing. And there are a few questions that people keep asking: that why did I get it? Can I get rid of it? Is there a cure for it? Will it not come back again? So, is there any surgery for it? These are the questions which they keep on asking that. So, when they come to me, I ask them. Point is why why I got it is not a point right now. We have to leave it. How can we avoid it from getting it back again once you keep it under suppression? There is never a cure when we talk about certain diseases. Like when we talk about deficiencies, like when you have a thyroid, you do not talk about cure. We just say okay, it's like replacement. When we talk about replacing thyroid or an insulin or a thing, so it is like diabetes or hypertension because this is a lifestyle disorder. So when we talk about lifestyle disorder, we all talk about stress. We talk about diet. We talk about exercise. So when we say these three things are the most important thing which has caused this, what is the thing which is initiating thing? When does it come? This whole problem comes from adrenarche. Adrenarche means not not before the even the thyroidarche, pubarche, menarche. Okay. So it starts about four years before even the menstrual cycle starts. Okay. Going back and saying that means the kid is already already in fifth or sixth class. Means what is the pressure in that age we are giving them? The education pressure which we give. I have seen sixth class kids sitting in a corner and reading twenty four by seven because the parents say we have put her in a special IIT class or special medical class. These are the kids who are later going to go into having a PCOS because the stress of this thing. We do know there is an interlink between the adrenal glands and the, all the endocrine. Uh, organs. Ovary is an endocrine organ, and we have a hypothalamic, pituitary, ovarian axis which acts. This have a negative thing with the adrenal. So at the adrenals, we have a small little scientific called cytochrome P450, which is again have a correlation with ovary. So anything which is affecting there will affect here. The stress hormones are from adrenals. So you put a lot of her stress there, that is affecting the adrenals at the adrenals. One after one year after that, the pubar the thyroid stumps. Where the breast development happens, then the pubarchy happens. Where the pubic hair develops, then after one year, menarche happens. So changes which are happening there is the first thing which can cause. You do not see PCOS in the kids who are bindas in the sense who don't worry about education. They're happy in life. They go out. They play. You do not see that is first thing. And probably one of the reason if the child is more involved into the study, definitely the physical activity will be come down. So the next step will automatically happen with that is when the I'm 24 by doing that. A first answer I get from the parents is, oh my, she goes at 6:30. She'll come back only at 7:30. She doesn't have time to go to the gym and do exercises. So what I keep telling them is, you don't need time for that. Just go into the room. Close the door if you don't want to be seen. Just do three tapori songs where every muscle contracts. That is what we are looking at nowadays. We are in of tapori sa salu hai kar rehne do, alu ajin kar rehne do, jo bhi hai. So that is one thing. So automatically you are having the distress which is caused to this. Second, lack of exercise because you are telling they are hardly having time. They eat in between the thing. So what they eat is something which matters. The carbohydrates which are increased and the protein diet which has come down. Which are not being cut down because of lack of exercise again. So this whole three, the triad of lack of exercise, increased stress, and the dietary changes because of easy food which is available. And the second question which comes to is, should I only take medicines or any changes can cut? Fifty percent is the work of the kid and the parents who can get involved in it. Fifty percent only is what doctor can do. And the first fifty percent is more important. What you can do is more important than what I can do. So what you can do is, like I said, release the stress. Means it is not so easy because every very everybody the way they take the stress is different. A little amount of positive stress is very important for the best outcome of anybody. A little amount of stress is not that you don't study for exams. So that's not what we are looking at. The point when the stress starts affecting your heart rate or when you start get affecting you physically, that's a negative stress. So how do you decrease? It can be different for different people. It can be music for me. It 
can be dance for you. It can be just talking to people for you or just taking your phone and watching some bit, something which you like. So you choose your own de-stressor. It can be OM, it can be meditation, it can be anything. 10 to 15 minutes of meditation every day is what is important. Second, exercises. Like I said, you don't have time. Okay, you don't have to do. There are so many times people ask me, I do walking for one hour. But unfortunately for PCOS, that is not the exercise they need. No, in fact, yeah. I tell all my patients, yeah. walking is not an not exercise. An exercise. That is what I tell them. Yoga is good for health, but yoga is not exercise. Walking is good for health, for circulation. Walking is not exercise. We are looking at an exercise where every muscle uh, contracts. So it can be a dancing, it can be skipping, it can be uh, swimming, it can be cycling. These are the side of things. Or proper gymming, but they do the cross trainers and everything. So these are things which we look at when we look at PCOS because what we have, the basis, what is happening is insulin resistance. There is hyperandrogenism in there. These are the first two things which happens. Later starts the hormonal imbalance where this whole axis goes or even the estrogen and progesterone goes or agree. That's when we end up. So when you change your diet, you know, decrease carbohydrate, increase protein and average fat and do a regular exercise to 15 minutes a day and meditate. You can keep reading, you see insulin resistance, that's when we put insulin sensitizers and then comes the big this thing from the parents. Why are you putting, she's not diabetic, why are you worried, why are you putting her on an anti-diabetic medicine? We need to understand that when there is insulin resistance, unless we sensitize it, whatever exercise they do, they are not going to lose weight. So we need to sensitize that. So that's when we put sensitizers. It is unfortunately the same medicines which even diabetics take. That doesn't mean it is for diabetes. I always tell the patient, you take Dolo for or paracetamol for fever, for headache, for body pain. You have multi-purpose medicine. So this is something like that. Then if the testosterone levels are high, if we actually look at free testosterone, which is very difficult, so total testosterone also to check. Then you have acne. Then the, again, the body image is gone. Then the self-esteem goes. Yeah. So and then the abnormal hair on the lip or the hair, everything. Then that is because of again insulin yes, resistance. Yes. Insulin resistance causes complete neck darkening. Unless we put the again sensitizer, the acanthosis doesn't go. Unless we start this anti um, uh, spinolactone or well, we don't go to finasteride or something like that, but we just give a spinolactone or l lactone type of medicines, we do not get the uh, acne and the hair under control, so normal hair. Whatever hair which is already come, her citizen, they have to go for laser treatment. But whatever new hair should not come, we would be giving some short term treatment of these things. Then comes the actual period irregularity and the fear of infertility, not ovulating. It's a vicious cycle. If you don't ovulate, you're again going to have a hormonal imbalance. And you don't ovulate, you're going to be uh, irregular cycles. You don't ovulate, there is no egg, there is no pregnancy.